and at seven in the can. If there's one thing guaranteed in life, other than death, it's the fact that someone will try and con you every single day of your life. Hmm? Cons start when you're a kid. You fall over in the yard and you scrape the side of your leg so it looks like a slice of corned beef. <laughs> you run home screaming to your mum until now you have trusted her implicitly. She goes to the medicine cabinet, gets out a big bottle of iodine, gets hold of your leg <laughs> and says, now this won't hurt. <laughs> Do you promise? Well, just a teensy weensy little bit. <laughs> the next thing you know is that someone has put your leg in a bucket of molten lava. <laughs> <laughs> you hop up the wall, across the ceiling, <laughs> screaming blue murder, and what does your mum say? Don't be such a big baby. <laughs> you should learn straight away, but you don't. They take you to Foster Brothers for a uniform for your new school. And your mum gives you a coat and pants to try on. The sleeves in the blazer come down to your knees. And the crotch of the trousers is dragging on the floor. <laughs> And your mum says, don't worry, you'll grow into them. <laughs> I've got blazers in my wardrobe now. From when I was seven years old, and I still can't see my damn hands. <laughs> so, first day at my new school, and I'm flapping around like a walrus. And I get a bit of hassle from the school bully, Morgan. Not surprisingly, wearing what I'm wearing, he thinks I've left my brains in the tuck shop. <laughs> And he tries to sell me a dead hedgehog for five pounds. <laughs> and can he have the money the following day, or I'll get a dandruff salad. <laughs> <laughs> so I go home and I tell me dad, and he said, nonsense, you're not paying five pounds for a dead hedgehog? <laughs> <laughs> tell him what he can do with his hedgehog. And remember, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> No. <laughs> the bigger they are, the harder they hit you. <laughs> I went back to school next day and confronted Morgan. He was six foot three tall and built like a brick shelter. <laughs> I drew myself up to my full height, looked Morgan straight in the navel, <laughs> and I told him where he could put his stupid dead hedgehog. That same afternoon, Morgan was in hospital, watching the surgeon removing the final remains of the dead hedgehog from my arse. <laughs> Pets are another cunt. I mean, you get a hamster for Christmas because you're told a hamster will repay all the love you can show it. Oh, yeah? You clean its cage out, feed it every day, buy the wheel and a mirror, and the first chance it gets of escaping from its cage, it repays you by throwing itself on the robo-chef. <laughs> I got five pounds for it at school. <laughs> Cons are never-ending. What about fireworks today? I mean, I think that's a case for the Trades Description Act. It never used to be. When I was a lad, fireworks were fireworks. You bought a banger, and that's what you got. A banger. Standard fireworks used to make one called a mighty atom. What? Whew, you could see off two pounds of Semtex, this thing. <laughs> and as for Brock's big birth, a blimey had to set it off underground. <laughs> In Nevada. <laughs> I mean, you'd buy rockets that you had to point at Saturn and jumping jacks with proper instructions on the label. Place inside small boy's hood and run for it. <laughs> That's what fireworks are about, but now it's pathetic. I mean, they still call them things like intergalactic thunder blaster, 
Hey, I've heard tortoises fart louder. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to stick it in your lug hole to hear it go off. You know? We stand for anything these days, don't we? I mean, gift vouchers. There you are, there's another one. Gift vouchers. Buy a W.H. Smith £10 gift voucher and you can spend it at any branch of W.H. Smith's. Wow! <laughs> what a fabulous idea! Hey, I was going to give my nephew one of those stupid, awkward £10 notes that you can only spend in every shop in Britain. <laughs> Insurance companies are even worse. OK, Mr Carrot, here's the deal. You pay us money for the rest of your life, and when you die, we'll give it back to you. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now, you think when you're dead, the cons are going to stop, right? Wrong, wrong. Because some bright Arthur Daly has come up with the idea of cryogenics. Hmm? This is where, when you die, your body is frozen in ice until such time science has advanced to the point where bodies can be unfrozen and brought back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Who's behind this? Bird's eye? <laughs> I mean, do they know something we don't? You know, like in a few years' time, there's going to be such a shortage of food, we'll be desperate to eat anything? <laughs> Special offer, bird's eye fingers. <laughs> Oven ready, cock a van. <laughs> yeah, but whose? <laughs> and as for Findus rump steak, <laughs> forget it, forget it. It could be Margaret Thatcher's. <laughs> yeah, you don't want that brought back to life so she can start talking through it again, do you? <laughs> Of course I do. I'm a copper. I've seen worse. Come in, Dave. Oh. Didn't I tell you to go private? Oh, the NHS isn't so bad. But I've been here ten minutes earlier. I could have had a place out in the corridor. Are you Mr. Patel. Patel. <laughs> No. Oh, I've got a liver for Mr. Patel. Oh, come on, intensive care. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get him? Get who? The bloke who shot me at the stake out. No, we haven't got him as such. As such? As such. Oh, you must have seen him. He was standing behind me at the time. <sighs> no, I didn't see a thing. I mean, one minute, I saw you pull your gun, and the next minute, I saw it inky black. Have you seen Birmingham City one last night? It was you, wasn't it? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, that's great, that is, isn't it? First day on the serious crime squad, and you shoot me in the back. <laughs> God. How long am I going to have to apologise for? OK, so I shot you. OK, so you lost six pints of blood. OK, so you nearly died. Well, I'm sorry, Mr Bloody Fairy Knickers. Satisfied? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you haven't bought me any grapes. <laughs> Got you something better than grapes. What? Brought you some news that's going to cheer you up. <laughs> Super's taken us off the serious crime squad. Yeah. Just put us in the vice squad. <laughs> well, rumpy pumpy. <laughs> Actually, 
The super said the messing about with dirty books was all we was good for. We were such a pair of... Work. When you're quiet, it's <laughs> exciting the patient. <laughs> And it's two million quid with a hard pawn here. And it's pretty hot stuff. And remember, no peeking. Comforting to know, isn't it, that this is one pile of filth that isn't going to be allowed to corrupt society? Too true. Makes our job worthwhile to know we're protecting innocent people. of uh, filth is this oh usual sort of filth bare ladies Blimey. <laughs> sexy brides hardcore pirate videos what treasure island <laughs> <laughs> we bear pirates <laughs> Actually believe can you can you actually believe that people actually go out and buy this sort of stuff Lenore's softness does it contain? Stacks of it. All right. <laughs> Who's nicked all the damn towel? <laughs> oh, so much softness. So much softness.
I was fascinated by that report in the press about people's viewing habits. Apparently, 30% of viewers claim to make love while watching television. <laughs> that means right now, <laughs> about three million people are out there doing it. See you doing it, you know? <laughs> it's far too fast. Wait till news at ten and you can do it in time with the dongs. <laughs> when, when I watch television, I spend most of my time trying to answer all the questions it throws up. I mean, for instance, in the Gulf War, whenever Norman Schwarzkopf came on the screen, he was in camouflage combat gear. Yet you could always see him. <laughs> and what insurance company is Kate Aidy with? <laughs> I mean, every time you see her giving a report, she's walking through a minefield with a gun battle going on in the background. <laughs> a man from the Prue must be, like, scared out of his wits. Get out of there! Get out of there! <laughs> and a few weeks ago, I was watching the rerun of the film, Gandon. Do you know that film won an Oscar? For Best Wardrobe. <laughs> Best wardrobe for a giant mother care nappy and a pair of NHS specs. I mean... <laughs> and when you see the British telecom ads on the TV, how come BT always gets through first time? <laughs> never a wrong number, never gets cut off, never gets a rear drum pierced by the crackling on the line. No. I think the ads were pre recorded, you know. <laughs> I'm talking about phones, why is it when you're speaking to someone on the phone and you get to the end of the conversation, their voice, their voice starts to whisper? So I'll speak to you tomorrow then, okay? Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this? Bye. <laughs> and they do to bye, bye. <laughs> Some questions will never be answered. You know, I've always wondered whatever happened to the very first dog that went up into space. It was sometime in the early 60s and the Russians sent this dog on its own out into space with no chance whatsoever of it getting back. Its only chance was to be discovered by aliens before the winner lot ran out. <laughs> and if the aliens did discover him, I mean, what did they make of him? Hey, fellas. Look at this for a weird one. <laughs> Must be intelligent, though, to have built all this. <laughs> Tell us, oh wise one, what is the secret of your solar-powered propulsion system? <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing, Captain? Well, number two, he seems to be dragging his bum on the floor. <laughs> it's probably his way of greeting us. Let's do the same. <laughs> hey, this is fun. <laughs> What's he doing to your leg now, Captain? Difficult to say, but <laughs> let's do the same. <laughs> hey, this is fun. <laughs> What's he licking now there, sir? <laughs> I'll think we'll pass on that one, number two. <laughs> what a way to meet your maker, eh? Just drifting off into space, nobody to see you off, no funerals or anything else. And in a way, there's another puzzling question. Why is it, do you think, that of out of all the shops, only co-op does funerals. <laughs> Sainsbury's don't, do they? <laughs> As though they don't want to know. Yes, the co-op's been doing it for years. And what's it like? Uh, I've, I've never had to use them. I mean, what do you do? You just walk into a co-op store, you know, look round for the signs, you know, biscuits, toiletries, soft drinks, crematoria. <laughs> oh, but it's not next to the meat counter, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, I'll have six lamb chops, four ounces of Spam and a coffin, please. <laughs> Shall I trim the fat off, madam? <laughs> no, he'll fit in there just fine. <laughs> have you ever thought where you can buy hearses from? It's weird, isn't it, having just one make of car, especially for the dead? 
Well, two if you include Skoda's in the fast lane. <laughs> <laughs> At least the hearse is safe, do you know? And I've checked this out. There's never been one recorded instance of anybody being killed in a hearse. <laughs> there must be a hearse showroom somewhere, you know, with a smarmy little salesman. Oh, <laughs> lovely little runner, sir. Yes, oh, naught to 60 in all oh, three weeks. <laughs> Plenty of room in the back for one. <laughs> Two at a stretch. <laughs> See how big the ashtrays are, eh? Now, wouldn't you like to be seen dead in this? <laughs> yeah, do you want a drink? <coughs> yeah, 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 cos I'm getting really pissed, right? Yeah, I'm almost completely out of my box, right? <laughs> do you want some more apple ties? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to get off with then? Well, I don't know yet, right? Cos last weekend I got off with three girls, right? One of them was really old. Twenty. Well, I don't care anyway, right? Cos I've snogged all the girls in the whole school. What, in a sixth form? Yeah, and two of the teachers. Well, you snogged Miss Hargreaves? Yeah. What, well, freak? <laughs> no, she teaches history. <laughs> well, well, I snogged, right? I snogged the blonde one off of Baywatch. You never. Well, I got off with, right? I got off with... What's the name out of Darling Buds of May? Well, David Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she fancied me, right? She fancied me, cos I've got a motorbike. You haven't got a motorbike, you haven't I got have, a motorbike. Right? I have, and you're sus, right? Cos it's a really good one, cos it's a Hardley Davidson. Yeah, right. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, really well, drive. I'm gonna learn to drive, right? I'm getting lessons for my 14th birthday. Well, I can already drive. I drive my dad's car. What car's your dad got? It's got a Ferrari. He's never. Oh, yeah, so your sus is a really good one, right? Cos it's a Ferrari estate. <laughs> right, you can do 160, but there's loads of room in the back in case you want to stop and get off with someone. <laughs> Did you get into a pub? Did you get in the pubs? I got into a pub when I was 11. You never. Mumps. <laughs> you get into an 18 film. Yeah, well, I could do that, right? I could do that, right? Cos I got into this really posh pub, right? We have to be 21, but they let me in, right? Cos they thought I looked it easy. Right, well, I got to the shop, right? I got to a shop where you have to be 45 before they let you in, right? What shop? Little Woods. <laughs> yeah. I like the music. Yeah, I don't, right? I don't like this music, right? Cos only, like, a hard, like, raw, heavy metal, right? Like, Chesney Hawks. <laughs> right? And the IMF, and that. Yeah, well, last summer, right? Last year, I went to see Madonna. So? I got off with her. You never got off with her! I got off with her, I got off with her, and I, I asked her out. And then I went to New York with her, but I came back. Why'd you come back? Because I would have missed school. <laughs> well, I'm always missing school, right? Because I always bunk off. I always bunk off so I can take drugs. <laughs> yeah, well, I take millions of drugs, right? Because I've smoked acid. Where'd you buy it? <laughs> I didn't buy it, I found it in my chemistry set. <laughs> well, that's sulfuric acid, isn't that sulfuric acid? That's not a drug, right? I've snorted Vino's, right? <laughs> I'm getting really pissed, right? Shall we try some lager? Mm, you shouldn't drink out of other people's cans cos you can get VD. <laughs> no, you can't, right? You can't, cos you catch VD off of toilets. Well, you shouldn't drink out of other people's toilets either, right? <laughs> so you're sussed. Anyway, I only drink shorts. What's that? It's like Guinness and woodpecker and that. <laughs> anyway, I'm, oh, this party's really boring. I might move on. I might go to a club or something. What, like string fellows and yeah, that? Yeah, I've been there loads of times. String fellows, really good club, right? Cos you can play table tennis and that. <laughs> or I might just get off with someone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think you are, mate. I don't think you're going to, cos your dad's in the hall, right, with his pyjamas on and he's coming to pick you up. <laughs> oh, well, I'll, well, I'll better go, all right. All right, uh, I'll see you at Cubs. <laughs> This week, we take a look at the caring, highly qualified and supremely professional work of the fully trained ambulance man. <laughs> the modern ambulance man is fully equipped to deal with any emergency. And one of the most important aspects of his job is dealing with on-the-spot medical treatment. <laughs> and of course, 
course, the one-man operator has to be both driver and navigator for the sometimes urgent journey to the hospital. There are those who claim that Britain is moving towards a two-tier medical system. But the diligent ambulance man will treat both his private and NHS patients with the same high standards of care. <laughs> on NHS resources means that the ambulance man must make the best possible use of his facilities and equipment. Even if this does mean cutting corners occasionally. The ambulance man is caring, compassionate, courteous and kind. And that's why he's one of the most highly respected members of the community, with a close circle of friends and admirers. <laughs> Next night on BBC One, it's football. Make it both.